one of the things that we uh, work very hard with our students, um, and I realize in my own past work as a user, user interface designer, for example, I, I did this just less consciously at the time, is to close that loop. So what we often say is that you don't really have a game until you have that first closed loop where the, the player can do something in the game, see some effect, get some feedback, and then have that come back to them to change their future intentions and, and future mental model. Um, so the player said, feedback loop, the right? Player feedback loop, exactly right. Yeah. Um, so that 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 is uh, the key thing, really. I think in a lot of different kinds of product design, but certainly in game design, where I do something in the game, I get feedback from the game, and that then changes my next intention, helps me build my mental model of the game. That's gameplay. And until you have that, you don't have a system, and you don't really have a game. So this is a, a, a simplified, very simplified version showing the player having their own mental model, their own systems going on inside their head. As a player, you give input into the, into the game. The game then does something complex internally as well. If, and then that provides you feedback to the player, which then helps them or allows them to update their mental model. It's important that both of those sides, the player and the, and the game, have complex systems going on inside them. If every time I gave a, a particular input, the game gave the very same output, I wouldn't really build a mental model of that and it wouldn't seem like much of an experience. Now this one is, is really fascinating to me because it is, I, I've labeled this here as the game designer feedback loop, but really this is the product designer loop where as a product designer, inevitably what you're doing is watching your users or your players, if you're a game designer, use your product, get feedback from the product, adjust how they use it. I might change how I hold a tool or how I apply it. And as a product designer, what I have to do is watch that whole system, that whole process, and adjust my design of the product to better fit what the, what the user or player is looking for. This is also a great example of how whenever we find systems, we find them in multiple layers. So we have the systems going on inside the player and the game here, and then the system of the game and the player together. And then outside of that, we have yet another system of the designer and the game plus player system. So we have these multiple levels. And one of the things that we, we see a lot in as game designers, and I think just as systems thinkers, is finding this ability to look at multiple levels of the system at any given point, sort of like zooming in and out of your focus. So I can say, what's the player thinking at this moment? What's their intention? Or what's happening in the game at this moment? What's, what's going on there? Zoom that and say, okay, so what feedback is the game giving? All right, how does that affect the player? And then zoom out again and say, how does it affect me as, as a designer, that feedback from that system, so that I will now change the game to be slightly different and give the player a different experience. And again, this generalizes out to all different kinds of product design, whether you're designing you know, hammers or medical scanners. It, it really is the same process. Want more? Join me in the Game Thinking Hub, our free group for product leaders who want to innovate smarter. Go to gamethinking.io slash hub and sign up today. I'll see you there.